Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be having a look at tribunals following the WJC AS law specification. Okay, so let's have a look at the overview of tribunals. So tribunals are a part of the civil court system and they are an alternative to traditional courts. So an alternative to the courts such as the county court and the high court at first instance. So they are specialist courts whose judges and members hear a wide range of cases dependent on the jurisdiction of the tribunal itself. So as I've got in this second point, tribunals decide a wide range of cases ranging from workplace disputes between employers and employees in employment tribunals, for example, as well as appeals against decisions of government departments, for example, in areas such as social security benefits, immigration and asylum, education, tax. They hear around a million cases each year. So they're a huge part of our civil justice system because they hear more than any other part of the justice system. So tribunals are vital in England and Wales. So um, the history of tribunals, when did they come about? So tribunals have been around for a long time, um, since 1799. However, they became more prevalent after World War II, because if you have studied history in World War II or after World War II um, in the UK, we gained more rights, we gained more social rights, but that led to more disputes, for example, between an employer and an employee um, about an unfair dismissal, for example. So in 1957, the Franks Report was um, commissioned to look at the use of tribunals and they found that tribunals need to be open, fair and impartial. These are three key words that describe what tribunals should be at their core. So the Franks Report did put forward some recommendations in order to make tribunals open, fair and impartial. However, those recommendations were not that successful and tribunals were still in need of reform. So that leads us to the Leggett Review. So Sir Andrew Leggett was put in charge of examining tribunal systems at the turn of the century. So his him and his team created this review, Tribunals for Users, One System, One Service, and identified some weaknesses of the tribunal system, and then also put in some recommendations as to how to solve these weaknesses, which we'll have a look at in just a second. So the first weakness that I've got listed on here is lack of accessibility. So as we said before, um, Frank noted that um, tribunals should be open. So this isn't just that the hearing should be held in public. Leggett believed that people should also be aware of the right to use tribunals. And he found that this was not the case. He said that this was a criticism that people did not know they had the ability to use tribunals and therefore were unable to access them. He also found that tribunals were not user friendly. Tribunals are meant to be um, an alternative to go into a traditional court, so they should be less formal. However, this review found that they were becoming more and more formal and more people were using legal representation. He also found that the tribunals were dependent and dependent on government departments because these government departments often provided administrative support. This, he argued, um, intra interfered with um, the Article 6 right to a fair trial because the government had kind of some influence over the tribunals. He also found there was a lack of coherence. So there was no um, kind of standard of practice across the board. There were some tribunals that were doing very well. They were given a very good service, whereas others weren't so great. So he brought about some recommendations. So the review concluded that tribunals needed to be modernised through a radical approach. So these are four of the recommendations found in the Leggett Review. One of them was the single tribunal service, and this was to help achieve efficiency, coherence and independence. And this was hoping to um, make the process easier for claimants and remove the government getting involved with any of the administrative side of things. 
He also believed that similar tribunals should be grouped together and that each division should then be headed by a registrar who takes on case management in order for the um, whole process to be more efficient. He also argued for a user-friendly system and said that people should be discouraged from using legal representation. Once again, tribunals should be an alternative to go in to a traditional court, so they should be cheaper, they should be more accessible, and they should be less intimidating. And he also argued for a single route of appeal. So the Leggett Review, or the Leggett Recommendations, led to the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007 being passed. So what did this Act do? The Act, first of all, created the First Tier Tribunal and the Upper Tribunal. Within each of these tiers, there are chambers or groups of similar jurisdiction. So you have areas which look at similar um, issues. The first tier tribunal are usually where the cases are heard at first instance. And then the upper tribunal is primarily the appellate tribunal. So that's where you'd go to appeal. This is that single route of appeal. You go from your first tier tribunal up to your upper tribunal. There is um, some circumstances where an upper tribunal would be um, the first instance um, court or tribunal. However, it is rare and it's only for certain jurisdictions. And it could be that if a case is heard on appeal in the upper tribunal, if needed, it could go to the court of appeal then. But that is in rare circumstances as well. OK, so the running of the tribunals. So all members of tribunals are appointed by the Judicial Appointments Commission and they're recognised as judges, which elevates the status of tribunals. And because this independent commission um, appoints the members, it makes it more independent as well. The whole tribunal system is then headed by the senior president of tribunals, who is responsible for assigning judgments and helping any issues that may arise. Um, so once again, we've got that support to make sure there is consistency within the tribunals. The tribunals are then overseen by His Majesty's Court and Tribunal Service, and the Administrative Justice and Tribunals Council was created to review the tribunal system and advise on future reforms to make sure there is that kind of um, uniform standard of practice across the board. So when you go to tribunal, who's there? Um, so the composition of tribunals, employment tribunals are composed of a judge sitting alone or in certain types of cases as a judge or two lay um, lay non-legal members who are experts in the areas needed. I have just put employment here. Um, all tribunals may either have a tribunal judge or a judge and some experts in the area, some non-legal members. So their powers, the judge's powers, depend on the jurisdiction in question, but it could be awarding compensation, ordering re-employment and making recommendations in discrimination cases, for example. So what are the advantages of tribunals? Why would you rather go to a tribunal than a civil court, for example? So one of them is speed. So tribunal cases come to court fairly quickly and are often dealt with within a day. Um, it also means that um, you're not waiting around for your case to be heard, kind of causing more stress. Tribunals are often given a time and a date of a hearing, which then minimises time wasting. Um, it's a lot cheaper to go to tribunals as well. As I've already discussed, legal representation is discouraged, um, which can reduce cost. Um, most of the time, the tribunals do not usually have charge fees and each party pays for their own costs rather than the losing party paying for both sides. Um, tribunals tend to be a lot more informal and therefore less intimidating. Um, it tends to be that wigs are not worn, um, the rules of evidence are not as strict um, and there's not that intimidating atmosphere. However, as we just noted, because tribunal judges are seen as judges, there has been an increase in the formality of tribunals because of that. So that's the 2007 Act. So tribunals are also quite flexible as well. In a traditional court system, you would have the, um, the rule of precedent where you have to follow a decision of the court above you. However, in the tribunal system, that um, is a lot more flexible. They don't operate on a strict rule of precedent. 
There's also specialisation, so tribunal members, those lay non-legal members, also have expertise in the relevant area. So they're able to build up a depth of knowledge that judges in your ordinary civil courts wouldn't be able to do. So there's a relief of congestion in the ordinary courts. As we already mentioned, tribunals hear around 1 million cases per year. Imagine those in the civil court system. It would be very clogged up. It would take a long, long time to get through all of those cases. We've also got awareness of policy. So the expertise of tribunal members means they're likely to understand the policy behind the legislation in that area um, and they have discretionary powers to put those into practice. Cases can also be heard in private in some circumstances, so that means that they don't have to kind of air their dirty laundry. And tribunals tend to be independent and fair. Because the Judicial Appointments Committee appoints the tribunal judges, the government is no longer involved and therefore it should be more um, independent, more impartial. And the unified set of procedures and rules also minimise the risk of inconsistencies between different tribunals. Okay, so disadvantages of tribunals. Ironically, even though we've just said privacy is um, an advantage, it can also be a disadvantage as well, because those tribunals that are held in private um, may lead to just suspicion about the fairness of the decisions made. So if you cannot watch the decision being made, it might be um, some uh, the lack of openness about why that decision was being made. There's also no state funding available for this, um, or is only for a very mi small minority of cases. Um, so those tribunals that deal with very complex issues may need uh, legal representation, which is very difficult to fund yourself unless you've got a lot of money. Because as we know, um, lawyers or solicitors often um, charge a lot of money. Legal aid cuts have damaged this. So if there is no state funding available, you might not be able to afford that representation for a complex case in a tribunal. There can be some delays as well. Um, even though we said that tribunals do come to courts very quickly, there can be delays for more complex cases. Still, even though it is a more informal um, place to go, less, less formal than the courts, um, there may be parties who are still intimidated by the fact they have to go to court and they might be worried about not having that legal representation too. And because there is a lack of precedent, it is that um, there may be some conflict in decisions and the outcome of cases can be very unpredictable because it's based on the facts and the judge of the day. Hopefully that's helpful and that covers the key points needed for um, tribunals. If you've got any questions, just give me a shout. Thank you.